there's no uh, sugarcoating the fact that we have done far too little until now. And to use a typical Irish expression, I wouldn't start from here. Like it's 30 <laughs> years ago since the first uh, climate change treaty in Rio in 1992, when we didn't fully know. We, we'd had the first IPCC report, which said you've got to act, people. We're now on the sixth one. Mm. And we still haven't done enough uh, in, in, anywhere, but in Europe and, and, and rich countries in particular, we've made some progress. And to be fair, the technology is advanced. So look, this, this uh, environmentalists hate saying this, but this is kind of our last chance. We hate saying it because, you know, if the next report comes out in three years time, and we haven't acted. Well, you can tell me why. But like, it really does seem to be, it's actually uh, the, the chief scientist, the chair of the IPCC stole my line. I was just reading his press release. He said it's now or never. And I think that is the takeaway from this. So 1.5 degrees was this figure that we were always being quoted. We have to stop the world, uh, uh, the, the, the global temperature uh, on average increasing by over 1.5 degrees. I understand and this has only been published in the last hour. Uh, so we're all kind of trying to get our heads around it as much as we can, as quickly as we can. There seems to be a suggestion we will go above 1.5 degrees, but but by adaptation of behaviour and through new technology, we can then bring it back down below. Is that it? Yes, I think from from our reading and, and my, my colleague was still going Going to the detail to confirm this as I left my, as I left home today, uh, it looks like all the scenarios they and they paint different scenarios. They'd all see us going over one point five, or okay. almost all of them. That was we weren't quite sure of. We'd see us going over one point five some degree. Uh, but that the, in the better case scenarios, where we, which means where, where we act more and faster, we can bring it back down below 1.5 this century. So is it, does that mean? And, and apologies to interrupt you, but does that mean that that there is going to be? some short term pain. I mean, what ha- what happens when the globe, when we tip over 1.5 well, degrees? I know it's not a kind of yeah, an overnight sort of exactly. catastrophe, it's, it's, but it's not, there well, must be some ramifications. I was going to say, it's not, it's not a switch, but actually, if we go much higher than that, it can be, as in there are these things called tipping points, whereas if, yes. you know, if, if the tundra across the top of, of, of Canada and, and uh, Russia melts, then it releases all the methane trapped in the bogs and then we're kind of in a, ba- in a vicious cycle. But it is no, like, it's not magic 1.499 and 1.5. And, actually, and so the key takeaway is like every degree counts and every tenth of a degree counts. So before Paris in 2015, we were on track for four five or six degrees of global warming. Now, if you look at the pledges and the actions, it's more like two, 2.5 or maybe three or so. So it's still like anything above two is catastrophic, mm. but it's not as catastrophic as six. So we're like, we're getting better with our pledges. We're getting a bit better with our action, but not fast enough on the action. So yes, it looks like even if we do, you know, everything the UN scientists say and everything that environmental campaigners and, uh, and experts say and energy experts say over the next five and 10 years, we probably will still overshoot a bit. But that'll be a whole lot better than if we don't. I mean, we're already seeing, we're at about, we're at about one degree of global mm-hmm. warming now. We're already seeing in, our, in Ireland, which is like one of the better, climatologically, one of the better protected places, we see the extremes much less here than we do in the equator or the poles. We're seeing more frequent storms, like periods where it doesn't rain at all, and then periods where it dumps rain on us and our gutters can't cope with that. Like that's at one degree of global warming. If we let it go to 1.5, we're going to have worse. And if we go over two, well, then we may not be able to stop it getting, you know, a really vicious cycle that will be make, I mean, the scientists would say the, the human civilization as we know as we know it, seven billion people uh, existing on the planet, is at stake if we mm. don't act on, on this uh, basis. The, the carbon capture and storage is a technology you mentioned. It, it, it can be quite controversial because, as you say, it, it isn't proven as a technology yet. And then there are people who suggest it's kind of a cop out. It allows people to continue polluting, and we'll just say we're kind of like picking up the litter after us a, yeah. a little bit, um, and, and, and ignoring where you have to kind of store all of that litter in the long run. But there is, I understand stand in at mention of using technology at some point in the future uh, uh, to, to remove carbon from the atmosphere, isn't yeah. there? I mean, the first thing to say is, like, it do, it, when I say unproven, it doesn't, it doesn't, it isn't happening anywhere. Like, it yeah, isn't it happening at yeah. scale. So, yeah. like, it, it's not, it's not, it's not there to use. Like, if, if it was there, like, if, if, if the scientist was saying, actually, you know what, we discovered under the couch, here's this perfect technology that will capture the carbon, capture the carbon for you. I wouldn't be sitting here saying, don't use it, because I'm a Puritan environmentalist. I'd be saying fantastic, let's use that to stop going over 1.5. But, but by the way, it would still be better if we didn't have to pay Russia for the oil and gas and if we had more cycling and walking facilities and more public transport you know, powered by green mm. hydrogen. And it would still be better if we had walkable cities and if we had warmer homes that didn't need as much heat. That would all still be good to do. So that's why environmentalists get worried. Environmentalists get worried that because we're all would rather not to have to change, even if actually when we have the change, it's quite nice afterwards to have a warmer yeah. home. And a, but we're and a creatures nice of habit. Yeah, but it would be if it was like that, fine. But we yeah. have to, you know, figure it out and find the loans and find the supports. So, but even if, so like if carbon capture and storage was there, 
grand, but it's not there. But yes, we have to keep researching. And it may well be that we will need to use it. If it, if it comes to fruition, we will need to use it in 2040 or 2050 to, to get back below 1.5. So w- w- when, w- when we talk about then adaptation and the implementation <clears throat> of technology and we put it into an Irish context, I mean, what, what needs to be done? What should be done? What could be done here in the foreseeable? What, what industries in particular are outliers for you? You think, right, well, that, that is a trend that absolutely has to be reversed. Well, I mean, it, it, I, I wouldn't, you won't be surprised to hear me say. I know what's coming, Oshie. Uh, Go on. Along with all sectors, and I'll take 10 seconds in each, we have increased our, our, our intensification and our pollution from agriculture yes. really significantly over the last uh, six, seven years in particular. Now, what was the trend before that? It's kind of plateauing. Like okay. it was kind of, to be fair to agriculture, and I do often say this, but it gets lost in the noise, that agricultural emissions didn't rise like since, since 1990, when we started measuring this seriously, mm. like transport emissions went up like almost three times and then began to come, came back down a bit in the recession. Uh, agriculture didn't do anything like that. But now the problem now is like we're baking in future emissions all the more as we as we double down on more fertilizer, more cows. And, and that's like it's now over a third of our emissions. So we need to reevaluate that. And the context of fertilizer prices going up a bit like, you know, because it's based on fossil fuels, mm. like energy prices going up. Now is the time to reevaluate that, to de-intensify, de-stock, as in not culling cattle, but moving towards having lower total cattle numbers yeah. in five and ten years time and having a more, a, le- a less But I mean, it was, it was the end system. of milk quotas yes, is when that trend turns. Yeah, and look, it's, it was like an unfortunate situation where we were in the middle of a recession. We weren't able to borrow like we could in the last few years to invest in like all the positive things like retrofitting and so on. And the government was looking for anything that might make money for the, for the state. Mm. And so we, 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 we invested and, we, and more to the point, we, we encouraged farmers to invest in intensifying agriculture. And I understand it's very hard to say now suddenly, well, you shouldn't have done that. But when we were making these warnings 10 years ago, like it was a policy mistake to, to, to go down that road. Yeah. It is a cul-de-sac uh, uh, environmentally. And we would say, I can imagine, economically and socially in the end and it's time to you know re- recalibrate as soon as possible but look it's also the case of of you know the, the public transport the cycling and walking infrastructure which will also help us get off Russian oil and gas uh, and um, the retrofitting and look for, so you know the biggest thing we can do between now and next winter to avoid uh, the price increases we're seeing is the, the, the easy retrofits the, the attic insulation and the cavity wall insulation there are 80% grants from the SAI for that now for those who, who can afford even the 20% but that's a few hundred quid so yeah. not everybody but lots of people and the SEI should like put no limit on how many people can do that in the next six months and there is also a scheme for those who, can, who qualify who are on fuel allowance or who, are, or who are on other working family payments and social welfare payments who can get 100% retrofits the SEI needs to really promote those over the next six months that's the way to keep more of us warm cheaper if between now and next winter